अपलोड लेटर धनेश्वरी माता जी हेल्प मी स्टार्ट ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय नारायण नमस्कृत नरम चेवा नरोत्तम देवी सरस्वती व्यास तथो ज्यादी नष्ट प्रायशो भद्रेशु नित्यम भागवत सेवया भगवती उत्तम श्लोके भक्ति भवती नष्ट की Reading from Shrimad Bhagavatam, fifth canto, chapter one, verse number seven. Okay, whoever wants to read the verse, raise your hands, please. Shrinivas Rao Prabhu ji, go ahead, please. Hare Krishna Mata ji, Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya, Atah Bhagavana Di Deva Yetasya Guna Visargasya. वासुदेवाय अतः भगवान आदिदेव एक गुण विसर्ग से पिब्रुमण अवसित सकल जगत अभिप्राय आत्मोनिर्खिल निगम निजगण पिवेषि स्वभावना हरे कृष्ण माता जी ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय अथ भगवान आदिदेव एक गुण विसर्ग से पिब्रह्मणाध्याय व्यवसित सकल जगत अभिप्राय आत्मोनिखिल निगम निज गण परेषि स्वभाव नादवता हरे कृष्ण माता जी ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय अतः भगवान आदिदेव एक गुण विसर्ग से पिब्रुमण अवस्थित सकल जगद अभिप्राय आत्मोनिखिल निगम निज गण पिवेषि स्वभाव अवतारा हरे कृष्ण माता अंजलि माता जी हरे कृष्ण अथ भगवान आदिदेव एक गुण विसर्ग से पिब्रुहणाध्यान व्यवसित सकल जगद अभिप्राय आत्मोनिखिल निगम निज गण पिवेषि स्वभव स्वभवनाद अवतर तार हरे कृष्ण माता जी थैंक यू माता जी कृष्ण आर विजय कुमारी माता जी हरे कृष्ण अदह भगवान आदिदेव एक गुण विसर्ग से पिप्रद हनाध्यान व्यवस्थित सकव जगत अभिप्राय आत्मोनिखिल निगम निज गण पिवेषि स्वभवना अवदार हरे कृष्ण थैंक यू माता जी कृष्ण आयुषी माता जी हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण माता जी धन प्रणाम अथ भगवान आदिदेव एक गुण विसर्ग से पिब्रह्म हनुनंदया व्यवस्थित सकल जगत अभिप्राय आत्मोनिखिल निगम निज गण प्रवि स्वभावना अवतारा थैंक यू वेरी मच माता जी हरे कृष्ण और लीना माता जी हरे कृष्ण माता जी धन्यवाद प्रणाम अत ही भगवान आदिदेव एक गुण विसर्ग से पिब्रुहणाध्यान व्यवसित सकल जगद अब अभिप्राय आत्मोनिखिल निगम निज गण पिवेषि स्वभवनाद अवतार हरे कृष्ण की माता जी ओके विल एंड विद सूर्य प्रकाश राव प्रभु जी हरे कृष्ण माता जी धन्यवाद प्रणाम धन्यवाद प्रणाम ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय अथ 
ಭಗವಾನಿದೇವ ಗುಣ ವಿಸರ್ಗ ಪರಿಬೃಹಾಣ ಅನುಧ್ಯಾನ ವ್ಯವಸ್ಥಿತ ಸಕಲ ಗದ ಸಕಲ ಜಗದಾಭಿಪ್ರಾಯ ಆತ್ಮಯೋ ನಿರಕಲ ನಿಗಮ ನಿಜಗಣ ಪರಿವೇಷ್ಟಿತ ಸ್ವಭಾವನಾದವತಾರ ಹರೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಮಾತಾಡಿಂಡೀಡ್ ಭಗವಾನ್ ದ ಮೋಸ್ಟ್ ಪವರ್ಫುಲ್ ಆದಿ ದೇವ ದ ಫಸ್ಟ್ ಡೆಮಿ ಗಾಡ್ ಆಫ್ ದಿಸ್ ಯೂನಿವರ್ಸ್ ಗುಣ ವಿಸರ್ಗ ದ ಕ್ರಿಯೇಷನ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ಥ್ರೀ ಮೋಡ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಮಟೀರಿಯಲ್ ನೇಚರ್ ಪರಿಭ್ರಹನ ದ ವೆಲ್ಫೇರ್ ಅನುಧ್ಯಾನ್ ಆಲ್ವೇಸ್ ಥಿಂಕಿಂಗ್ ಆಫ್ ವ್ಯವಸ್ಥಿತ ನೋನ್ ಸಕಲ ಹೋಲ್ ಜಗತ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ಯೂನಿವರ್ಸ್ ಅಭಿಪ್ರಾಯ ಬೈ ಹೂಮ್ ದ ಅಲ್ಟಿಮೇಟ್ ಪರ್ಪಸ್ ಆತ್ಮ ದಸ ಸುಪ್ರೀಂ ಸೆಲ್ಫ್ ಯೋ ನಿಹಿ ಹೂಸ್ ಸೋರ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಬರ್ತ್ ಅಖಿಲ ಆಲ್ ನಿಗಮ ಬೈ ದ ವೇದಾಸ್ ನಿಜಗಣ ಬೈ ಪರ್ಸನಲ್ ಅಸೋಸಿಯೇಟ್ಸ್ ಪರಿವೇಷ್ಟಿತ ಬೀಂಗ್ ಸರೌಂಡೆಡ್ ಸ್ವಭವನಾತ್ ಫ್ರಮ್ ಇಸ್ ಓನ್ ಅಬೋರ್ಡ್ ಅವತ್ತ ಅವತಾರ್ಸ್ಲೇಷನ್ಸ್ವಾಮಿಸ್ಟ್ರೀಮ್ಸ್ವಾಮಿಸ್ for he knows the purpose of the universal creation this supremely powerful lord brahma accompanied by his associates and the personified vedas left his own abode in the highest planetary system and descended to the place of prince priyavrat's meditation puppet by divine gesherva parsha baat ki jaye lord vishnu the supreme self atma is the source of everything as explained in vedanta sutra janmadi asyataha because brahma was born directly from lord vishnu he is called atma yoni he is also called bhagwan although generally bhagwan refers to the supreme personality of god vishnu or lord krishna sometimes great personalities such as demigods like lord brahma and narada or lord shiva are also addressed as bhagwan because they carry out the purpose of the supreme personality of godhead lord brahma is called bhagwan because he is the secondary creator of this universe he is always thinking of how to improve the situation of the conditioned souls who have come to the material world to enjoy material activities for this reason he disseminates the vedic knowledge throughout the universe for everyone's guidance vedic knowledge is divided into two parts pravarti marg and nivritti marg nivritti marg is the path of negating sense enjoyment and pravarti marg is the path by which the living entities are given a chance to enjoy and at the same time are directed in such a way that they can go back home back to godhead because ruling over this universe is a great responsibility brahma must force many manus in different ages to take charge of the universal affairs and at each manu there are different kings who also execute the purpose of lord brahma it is understood from various previous explanations that the father of dhruva maharaj king uttanapad ruled over the universe because his elder brother priyavrat practiced austerity from the very beginning of his life thus up to the point of the prachetas the kings of the universe were all descendants of uttanapad maharaj since there were no suitable kings after the prachetas swayamvara manu went to gandhamadan hill to bring back his eldest son priyavrat who was meditating there swayamvara manu requested priyavrat to rule over the universe when he refused the brahma descended from the supreme planetary system known as satyalok to request priyavrat to accept the order lord brahma did not come alone he came with other great sages like marichi or krishna i'm so sorry marichi atreya and vashisht to convince priyavrat that it was necessary for him to follow the vedic injunctions and accept the responsibility of ruling over the world lord brahma also brought with him the personified vedas his constant associates a significant word in this verse is swabhavanat indicating that lord brahma descended from his own abode every demigod has his own abode abode indra the king of demigods has his own abode as do chandra the lord of the moon planet and surya the predominating deity of the sun planet 
there are many millions of demigods and the stars and planets are their respective homes. Hmm. This is confirmed in Bhagavad Gita. Yanti Deva Vrita Devan. Those who worship the demigods go to their different planetary systems. Lord Brahma's abode, the highest planetary system is called Satyalok or sometimes Brahmalok. Brahmalok usually refers to the spiritual world. The abode of Lord Brahma is Satyalok because Lord Brahma but because Lord Brahma resides there, it is also sometimes called Brahmalok. It's a misnomer. Okay. Om Ajnan Timirandasya Gyanan Jan Chalakaya Chakshurun Miltam Yena Tasmai Shri Guru Vena Maha Shri Chaitanya Manovishtam Sapitam Yena Bhutale Swayam Rupa Oh God, I'm so sorry. Swayam Rupa Gadam Hiyam Tadati Sapadantikam He Krishna Karna Sindhu Deen Bandhu Jagat Pate Kopesha Gupika Kantha Radha Kantha Namaste Shukta Kanchan Gaurangi Radhe Vrinda Vaneshwari Vrish Bhanu Sute Devi Prana Mami Hari Priyayi Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advait Gadadhar Shri Vasadi Gaur Bhakti Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Ram Hare Ram 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 Hare Hare Namam Vishnu Padaya Krishna Pishthaya Bhutale Shri Mathe Bhakti Vedanta Swami Tinamine Namaste Saraswati Deve Gaurvani Pacharine Nirvishesha Shunevadi Paschati Deshatarine Sri Sukadev Goswami continued, the first created being and most powerful demigod in this universe is Lord Brahma, who is always responsible for developing universal affairs, born directly from the Supreme Personality of Godhead. He dedicates his activities to the welfare of the entire universe, for he knows the purpose of the universal creation. This supremely powerful Lord Brahma, accompanied by his associates and the personified Vedas, left his own abode in the highest planetary system and descended to the place of Prince Priyavrat's meditation. It sounds like a storybook, right? <laughs> to me, it sounds like a storybook when I'm reading. All right, we are reading from Srimad Bhagavatam. Welcome, everyone. Fifth Canto, The Creative Impetus, Chapter 1, which is called as what? Activities of, activities of, activities of, of Maharaj Priyavrat. The activities of Maharaj Priyavrat. And what are we studying so far? Priyavrat Maharaj Sukhdev Goswami was asked two questions by Parikshit Maharaj. What are the two questions? How can a person who is uh, uh, so elevated Krishna in uh, spiritual activities uh, get involved Krishna in Maharaj. the material activities? And uh, one who is involved in material activities, how can he rise to spiritual activities in Krishna consciousness? Hey, thank you. Anyone else? Thank you, Mataji. Anyone else? What are the two questions that Parikshit Maharaj is asking Sukhdev Goswami? Hare Krishna Madhaji. Yes. A person, a person who has self-realization remain in how he can remain in household life and how he was so attached to family life and then he achieved topmost infallible perfection in Krishna consciousness. And then what is the second question? That's number one. The second question. Second, first question he asked, how a self-realized soul can remain in family life? And how, the second question, how he was so attached to family life, the material life, and how he could achieve perfection in Krishna consciousness. All right. Thank you, Mataji. Chalega. Right, so the first question that Abhishek Maharaj asked Rukhdev Goswami is, that how such a self-realized soul, Siddhadeen Muni, who is always self-realized in satisfying the self, satisfying this, who is satisfied in satisfying the self-realized, or Krishna, or self-satisfied, who is satisfied in satisfying the self-satisfied, which is Krishna. It goes like this, satisfied in satisfying the self-satisfied, which is Atmaram, which is Krishna, achieve any satisfaction in the family life or household affairs. And then he asks how a person who is attached to the affairs of the family life or household the affairs become a devotee of Krishna or a pure devotee of Krishna rather. So it's a very perplex situation. And then what did Sukhdev Goswami say? Sukhdev Goswami started speaking from verse number five. What did he say? What did Sukhdev Goswami say? Hmm? What did he say? 
What did he say? He accepted both. What, what did he say in the beginning of the answer? Yeah. He accepted both. He accepted both the propositions. He accepted, he accepted both. That a person mm -hmm. who wants to capture his mind to the service of the Lord is not disturbed by the other impediments. Thank you. He accepts both. So he said he, said he both. 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 Huh. Huh. He accepted both and then he said that but there could be impediments mm -hmm. and these impediments are of two varieties and that mm -hmm. can uh, cause the issues and the problems. Mm -hmm. And then it subsequently the... goes goes into the sixth verse. Uh, so what are the two impediments in verse 5? Hare Krishna Mahaprabhu. I just like Radha Aparad and desire of the Lord. Vashna Aparad and desire of the Lord. Okay, okay. Yes, thank you, Mataji. Yes, Prem Prakash, yes, Prabhu. Verse 6, then what happens? You only taught us. Prem Prakash, yes, Prabhu, you were saying. Mataji, is a Mataji, can I talk? Yes, Hare verse Krishna. 6. Verse 6, what happens? Yes, and verse then. 6, uh, see, he, this, his father has instructed him to take the responsibility of this uh, mm. kingdom. Mm. Then, what he is already in, he is not, he is already in Krishna, developing Krishna conscious, and he doesn't, but he has to obey his father's service. So, he has accepted the responsibility at the same time. He never attached it to that materialistic life. He was in the in that mood, but because he 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 was surrendered to his guru, that is Nara, surrendered feet. So this has not affected his Krishna consciousness. He has discharged his responsibilities. At the same time, he never deviated from his Krishna conscious. That is the essence of that. And uh, see that for that he has told that uh, he was affectionate to his children and for, uh, wife, but he was not attracted to her Cherishma. That is one thing. Like that, what he has given this. Uh, Thank you, Prabhu. Uh, I appreciate it. Thank you very much. So, verse 6 that he is, Sambhu Manu goes to the place of Priyavrat Maharaj and asks him to take up the responsibility of entering the household uh, life and ruling the kingdom. So, he doesn't like the proposition. Priyavrat Maharaj doesn't like the proposition, but he understands that he cannot say no to the father. Then he very consciously, conscientiously asked this question, um, will it affect my Krishna consciousness? Will it affect my meditation on the Supreme Personality of Godhead if I take up this family affair? So basically, it's a way of saying no. Says, okay, I, I will do it. But if I do it, then I, my time will go in something else. So basically, you're saying no. It's, about, it's, a, it's a hidden no. And Brahma is, looks like he's hearing this conversation. And now Brahma says that, okay, Swami Manu is not going to be able to handle this. So Brahma, now Brahma takes. So this is the second person coming to convince uh, Priyavat Maharaj to take up the responsibility of, of entering the household life and ruling the kingdom. Now, before Brahma starts to talk, so Dev Goswami is taking a moment to define who Brahma is. Right? Brahma has not started talking yet, which did not happen in the case of Swami Manu. Of course, Swambhu Manu, the elaborate description is given in the second canto, Srimad Bhagavatam. But here, Sukhdev Goswami is taking a moment to describe that who Brahma is to Sukhdev Goswami, to Parikshit Maharaj, right? This is what this verse is. It's not, he could have just said that Brahma, the first created being who uh, who is Atma Yoni or who comes directly from the body of Garbhadaksha Vishnu, went to the Gandha Madana hill where Prayavat Maharaj is sitting and started talking to him and said this you know it could all be in like one verse but he's going to dedicate verse 7 8 9 10 four verses and the first two verses are just to define who brahma is what makes uh, sukhdev goswami take this moment is a th is a thoughtful thought provoking co um, question because he wants to convince parikshit maharaj what i can understand that this instruction was indeed uh, not a material instruction. You know, we can also tell our children or we can even tell ourselves that I need to take care of household affairs, so I need to get into a married life. Or we can tell our children 
that uh, we have to get the family running. So you uh, you do that uh, education, knockery and chok chokri business, right? And then marriage. But that's not what how Brahma is going to say. Brahma is going to, first, who is Brahma? Where he's coming from? And his instruction is not going to be something which is going to be derogatory for one's advancement in Krishna consciousness. So he wants to establish that completely from the beginning. Okay, so that's why he's, uh, Sukhdeva Goswami is saying the first created being and most powerful demigod in this universe is Brahma. You see how he's introducing Lord Brahma to Parikshit Maharaj. And who is Brahma? Who is always responsible for developing universal affairs. And why is he, why is he responsible for developing universal affairs? Is he power hungry? Like our politicians or, or me or maybe us ourselves, we are power hungry, right? We want this post, that post. So that we can run into an authority and be authoritative to others. No, it says Brahma is born directly from the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Okay, this is Brahma. He's not power hungry. That's why that's not the reason why he's developing universal affairs. Indeed, because he's born directly from Krishna, he dedicates his activities to the welfare of the entire universe. For he knows the purpose behind the universal creation. Every line is defining. That the instruction that is come out that is going to come out from the lotus mouth of Brahma is not going to be a material dictation. It's not going to put Priyavat Maharaj in the deep dark well of household affairs that we were speaking of when Prahlad Maharaj says, Matirna Krishna Parato Satova Ittabipadheta Grihavratana. That's not how it's going to happen. So he dedicates his activities, who is Brahma, to the welfare of the entire universe, for he knows the purpose of the universal creation. So that supremely powerful Lord Brahma, this supremely powerful Lord Brahma, accompanied by his associates and personified Vedas, he came to see Priyavat Maharaj where he was doing his meditation. So very important as to where are we getting our instruction from. Okay, well, who are we actually listening to before we actually take a step in our life? My Guru Maharaj was asked this question today that we might know the instruction of the Guru. Okay, we might even understand the instruction of the Guru, but we might still not be very inclined to follow that instruction. What makes us so, you know, lax? This was the question. What makes us so lax or what makes us so lazy for not being able to follow the instruction of the spiritual master despite of knowing the instruction? What makes us so lazy? So this question was asked and, and Krimaj answered that, well, because we are uh, still listening to our mind and the mind is always directing us to sense enjoyment so we're still listening to the mind and the mind is taking us trying to stay in this material world you know actually mind is born from which mode of uh, nature yeah second canter shrimad bhagavatam the mind is bo born of uh, which uh, mode satoguna. of satoguna from satoguna. From, yes imagine it's gone from the mode of goodness so when brahma was making the intelligence is from the mode of passion so basically, the mind is a product of mode of goodness. That is why it gets satisfied when it goes to Krishna or when we chant Hare Krishna, at least at this level. Of course, Hare Krishna chanting is a transcendental level, but we are not chanting at transcendental level. Even though we are chanting at the offensive level or Nama Aparad, we still are able to establish ourselves in somewhat more of a goodness, more of goodness. And that is why mind seeks satisfaction. Okay, it's not going to get satisfaction from products born out of mode of passion or ignorance. It's because that's not what it is. It's like, you know, a child is looking for a mother, but you give the child to the nurse, you give the child to the aunt or uncle, you give the child toys, you give the child like expensive jewelry, you give the child expensive clothing. Will that child be satisfied? Huh? Very happy? The baby will become very happy no. with all these things? No, no. It's not big unless and until you give it what it's really looking for. So actually we're looking for Krishna. Prabhupada gives this example in Hare Krishna Mahamantra chanting explanation. But 
why I'm trying to use this example here is because the mind is looking for satisfaction in the mode of goodness because that's where it's coming from. We want to, you know, soul is coming from Krishna, so soul can only be satisfied with Krishna. Mind is coming, material mind is coming from mode of goodness, it only be satisfied with the material mode of goodness, at least right now, at least for the time being. But what we do is that we give it to, uh, we try to satisfy it, satisfy it with the products uh, originating from mode of ignorance or passion, which does not satisfy the mind. Actually, it makes us more disturbed. There's more disturbance. So we bring disturbance. So Guru Maharaj was saying that uh, because we bring this mind in the middle, okay, and then we don't actually have a capacity to hear the Guru's instructions. We bring, we hear the mind. So, and then he said that Bhakti Vinod Thakur said that the one way of actually nullifying everything, all problems of life is by attentive chanting of the Hare Krishna Mahamantra. Just by attentive chanting of the Hare Krishna Mahamantra, one can overcome uh, by Krishna's mercy all the so-called impediments. But coming back, you know, Priyavat Maharaj is already at that stage. He has no impediment. He wasn't looking forward to get married. He wasn't looking forward to actually rule the kingdom. We don't hear that he was ever jealous of Uttanapad, that you know how Dhritarashtra is envious of Pandava, Pandavas and his brother Pandu because he thought that it was not moral, it was not ethical to give his right to rule the kingdom to Pandu because he was born blind. So he wanted to take revenge and wanted his sons at least to rule the kingdom if he could not. Right? This is what Mahabharat is. Yes. This is what it is, right? There are two brothers there yes, also. Yes. Yes, There are two brothers yes, there. There are two brothers here also. We are seeing two brothers here also. But we don't hear that Priyavrat Maharaj is actually harboring those feelings. On the contrary, he's contemplating and he's actually said no to his father. Because some, some women is not going to be able to answer this question. Krishna's arrangement is like this. It's not that some women who cannot get intelligence. Krishna can, can give intelligence to anybody. Right? Chaitanya Shaitamrita says, right, by the mercy of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, a blind man can see the stars in the sky, a lame man can cross the mountains, and a, and a, a person who cannot talk can actually give uh, can actually recite the Shastra. So, Chaitanya Shaitamrita, we read this. The Chaitanya Mahaprabhu can remove anything, any impediment. So, Krishna can remove it through Sambhava Manu also, but he's bringing Brahma, and then he's also going to bring Narad Muni. So, everybody will come to convince Priyavrat Maharaj because Priyavrat Maharaj needs this sense of security. He's looking for this sense of security that, okay, I, I don't want to lose the most precious position I have. And I don't have anything more precious than my devotional service to Krishna. There's nothing more precious. This is his position. Imagine that I, I don't want to be in the, in the ruling of a kingdom or get married to, uh, to these uh, good ladies or have a dozen of children or have a very, you know, heavily jeweled, uh, ladies in the house you know Prabhupada explains that materialistic men this is what they look for uh they want to have very good wife very beautiful wife <laughs> and they want the wife to be very nicely decorated with jewelry and then uh they want to have very good house and they want to have very good comforts and then they want to have children very good children uh, and and then they want to have the wife of the son also to be very very nicely decorated with heavy jewelry and very beautiful wife of the son also so basically Prabhupada explains this deha patya kalatra deshu atma sanneshu asat suapi right that verse Prabhupada explains that this is the vision of a materialistic person but Priyavrat Maharaj is not looking for forward for what kind of a kingdom are going to rule what is going to be the length and breadth of my uh, ruling or how many servants are going to be there or what kind of uh, wardrobe am I going to get or what kind of people am I going to talk? Am I going to be a diplomat or my ministers are going to be like this? He's not. He's asking one question. 
is asking one question and the question he's asking is that will my entering into the household life affect my devotional service one question which means that he knows that what is the most precious position he has possession he has is his bhakti for the lord which means that he's fully satisfied you know it's not easy to make that statement not not ordinary person can make that statement but this is a standard we have to reach this is a standard if we pray to priyavat maharaj that priyavat maharaj please give us this kind of a taste for krishna consciousness you know what you have a little bit of what you had if you can give me then i will be able to see my life in the shining light of bhakti otherwise you know not possible <laughs> not possible because krishna himself says in seventh chapter bhagavad gita that uh, his maya maya hi esha gunamayi mama maya durtaya right that my this maya is my maya and is very powerful you cannot just get out of it just by wanting to get out of it maya mitam tarantite one who surrender one who can cross over this maya one who surrender unto me so it's not that okay but just by recognizing the problem one is out of the problem no recognizing a problem solves the problem by 50% but there is still 50% to be remaining remaining 50% still remaining to be solved which can happen by one's own endeavor in krishna's mercy okay so priyavat maharaj is going to be listening to brahma who sukhdev goswami has already set a scene that who is this brahma very very powerful demigod most powerful demigod coming out of krishna whose responsibility is developing the universal affairs why because he is always thinking because he dedicates his activities to the welfare of entire universe for he knows the purpose of the universal creation okay so the whole scene is set that this is the person that priyavrat maharaj is going to be listening to so there is no way that krishna consciousness is going to be lost because lord brahma is a servant of krishna also if somebody is a true servant of krishna do you think that they will have they will give instruction which is going to be detrimental to somebody else's krishna consciousness yeah do you think that if you are trying to be krishna conscious uh, and you are benefited by it then the one sign one sign that you are actually becoming krishna conscious is that you would want others to become krishna conscious you would like to bring it because you will recognize that there is no other solution to anybody's problem of any kind yeah or you're going to be like okay this is for me i'm going to lock it in the i'm going to lock it in the jewel box and i'm going to keep it for myself and i'm not going to share it this is what krishna says in bhagavad gita what does he say in bhagavad gita chapter 18 devotional no, service he, he, is grant grant is guaranteed to the person who 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 spreads the message of krishna consciousness Great. to others yes. yes thank you he who says that who is actually spreading who is actually trying to spread this message of krishna consciousness that person will get devotional service to krishna not the person who is becoming very selfish and very secretive about it okay krishna consciousness is um simple but it's not easy it's simple the simple life it actually simplifies our life our the whole world might be talking about you know what is the price of this commodity that commodity or who has this much money or who has this much this but a krishna conscious person is going to be preparing to get out of this world because they know that there is nothing in this world which can actually uh be fully satisfied that doesn't mean that we are not going to use the commodities of this world in service of krishna it doesn't mean that we are not fanatics we are not in the process of mental speculation bhakti is a science right it's a science science means there is well defined protocols and pathways and procedures and if you follow those protocols pathways and procedures you will be replicating the result okay if somebody says that if you mix the salt in water the solution will become salty it is going to be true everywhere that science like that if you chant hari krishna and your life will become sublime it's true everywhere not just that is why it's a science it's true everywhere 
you know when i was in college i remember when i started going to iskon and and i started telling my friends about it so one of my friend got like really serious cuz i was changing and then she said you know you all from iskon you all talk the same thing everybody talks the same thing chant hari krishna and uh, you'll become happy chant hari krishna she was very serious can you guys talk something else i told her you see if we all talk the same thing it means that we all have understood the same thing so that's the definition of a knowledge no there is no doubt if we all go to the same school and come back with a different different version of knowledge is that really like a knowledge or, or no because you're coming back with the same training and trying to train everybody else that means we are trained in good hands right so uh, this is a science so a science of bhakti science of self realization right so this is the science of hearing from an authority which authority a bona fide authority who is making this authority bona fide guru sadhvin shastra not my mind not my mind i know a person who has a spiritual leader i asked okay so how do you call this person as a spiritual uh, leader or a spiritual mentor oh because uh, um, his talks make sense to me okay go more deep who where is this person getting the knowledge or oh, that i don't know this person is just inspirational i don't know where this person is getting knowledge you see we are already setting up a platform to get cheated and and get the seat but krishna can remove that also somehow if if a devotee of krishna enters in this person's life or anybody's life or our life right we are brought to krishna consciousness by somebody else right is there anybody who was brought not brought by a somebody else or some other devotee to krishna consciousness anybody in this room anybody no mata ji no mata ji person only we came into consciousness so we all have been brought to krishna consciousness by another devotee all of us right so it is our responsibility to actually inspire some other but not just with the dry philosophy you see the dry philosophy krishna consciousness is first of all not a dry philosophy it's not we will put life in the philosophy as much as we are applying this philosophy in our life this is my personal realization we can talk like a parrot right repeat the same thing but we will still not touch anybody's heart why i was thinking why because we are repeating the words why because we are not living it prabhupada is a pure devotee is acharya the meaning of the word acharya is that he is lead, leading his life by an example right he whatever he is saying he is living it too whatever he is writing he is living it too there is no gap between what he is saying and what he is living but we if we are not able to inspire somebody's heart and we make it sound like a dry philosophy and other person gets very tired of hearing or we get tired of hearing ourselves that means we are not making giving life to this knowledge that means we are not living it we are saying it but we are not living it which is actually the the discussion of manas shiksha today okay so understand that the second personality who is going to come to priyavrat maharaj is brahma understand the sukhdev goswami has taken a moment to describe who is brahma and understand that why has he taken this moment to describe brahma because he wants to emphasize that brahma is himself a devotee of krishna and he's born directly from krishna so whatever he's going to say is not going to be derogatory for somebody's else's krishna consciousness so understand that this is the person by priyavat maharaj is going to be hearing and the and by the mercy of shabhavad and sukhdev goswami and vyasdev we will be hearing it too it's so fortunate questions reflections realizations corrections before we go to manas shiksha questions reflections realizations corrections hari krishna badari yes prabhu hari krishna it's very revealing and very uh, insight provoking that you are telling that the mind is the <clears throat> cause of not allowing us to follow the instructions which are very clear and taking us further into the spiritual path <clears throat> and that's why they say that you should develop what is known as rati or a very deep attachment 
once you develop the rati, then the mind is being replaced by rati. And then there is no question of uh, that. That's what occurs at the stage of bhava. Uh, there is no question uh, that you you uh, sort of get away from the spiritual path. So now things correlate very well, Mataji, after you're making us understand the mind's uh, value and mind's obstructions. Thank you, Mataji. Very nice. Thank you. Hare Krishna, Mataji. Hare yes, Krishna, Mataji. Super, Prabhuji. Hare Krishna. Mataji, one uh, doubt is, Priyavrata is even elder brother of Uttan Pada. Hmm. Uttan Pada has denounced so much down dynasty and his uh, children, Prajatas has done. By the time everything is over, the time cycle might have gone so far that Priyavrata must have been very old. So that how now he is as a prince brought and uh, get into the affairs. Because age also is a matter. Well, I mean, their body is not like our body. And they were living, this is Satya, Satya Yuga, right? This is the story of Satya Yuga. So they were living one lakh years. Where was I reading? Oh, I was reading in Ramayan that, you know how old was Dashrat Maharaj when he had his children? Do you know how old was he? 10,000 years, I think. 60,000 years. Yes. 60,000 years old. So, and he was still... So, uh, that's what Valmiki is writing, 60,000 years. So, um, it's not... We have to compare apple to apple, not apple to an orange. They're not the personalities. And even if he was old, he will become young, even if he was, because, because of the mercy of all these devotees. Uh, or he will be able to conduct his responsibilities because these devotees are going to give him that have mercy. Narad Muni is going to give him that. For the discussion's sake, but I'm not sure what his age is. I know that what I read is that uh, the descendants of Uttanapad uh, ruled up to Prachetas because the Daksha in his second birth took two austerities. He didn't become a ruler again. And that was till the end of fifth Manvantara. Now this is the start of sixth Manvantara. Now we have to look at the age of sixth Manvantara, like how old, I don't know the number. That's when Priyavrat Maharaj's pastime is happening. And this is happening in Satya Yuga. That much I know. Okay. Yeah. One more thing is, if the mind is obstructive, what is the main objective of creation of the mind by God? It should have an objective. Yeah, what are the function of the mind? Yeah, tell me. The function of mind is, I think, sankalpa and vikalpa. Accepting, rejecting, and thinking, feeling, and willing. Yeah, so there's basically three thinking, feeling, willing. So, mind is there in the soul too. It's the real mind. Because the soul has feelings, right? It's coming from that mind. Thinking, feeling, and willing are there eternally. But when we come in touch with the material modes of nature, that that purity becomes covered. It becomes covered. It's not never lost. It becomes covered with all the desires for thinking, feeling, and willing in, in the material modes of nature. So the reason for creation of the mind is uh, we have to think and feel and have will like willpower. So that's the reason. And it's coming from that aspect. Okay, so the, originally it is there in the soul. Whatever is there in the soul is there in the material world. If it is not there in the soul, it's not going to be there in material world. Right? No, and then mind takes us to another gross body. A powerful mind can actually overlook the incapabilities of a weak body. Have you heard that people who have some disabilities but have actually gone far and wide in their lives to achieve impossible things right yes, yes. I, I, how because the mind is so powerful the powerful mind can overlook the or can overpower the weakness of the body but not the other way the, if the, if the body is weak i'm sorry if the mind is weak but the body may be very strong but the body is strong and the mind is weak the person doesn't go too far 
it's a very powerful weapon <laughs> given to us by Krishna. I say weapon because you have to use it with caution. You're not just going to use it with uh, uh, loose, you know. You're not going to like just throw knives up in the air and catch them like a ball, will you? Do that, Shubha Rav Prabhu? Okay. No, my bad. no. So it's because it's a weapon. Or, or when I teach my son how to drive, like, you know, I'm teaching him nowadays. So I tell him first thing we enter the car, that this is a weapon. You're sitting in a weapon. You have to be very, very careful. You cannot be, you know, inattentive while you're handling a weapon. It can kill everybody, anybody. So you have to be careful. So like that, mind can actually... Krishna says about mind, right? That with the help of the mind, one should rise himself and not, and not fall down. So Krishna wants us to use this weapon to rise ourselves, to raise ourselves. I don't know if I answered your question. Did I answer your question? Yes, Mother. Yes, Mother. Uddare tatman atmana atmana tadi. Yes. Thank you. Atmana atmana atmana. Yes, Mother. The uncontrolled mind Hare. is the worst enemy. Yeah. Thank you. Suri Prakash Prabhuji. Hare Krishna Mataji. Yes, yes, just know you. Uh, that's what I want to tell. In the Krishna, in Bhagavad Gita, he says that the mind is your enemy as well as your friend. See, if your mind is strong, you know, then you will be always directed to the spiritual level. Advancement will be there. So, although your intellectual is well put over this Maya, but if mind is weak, then you will be attracted to this uh, materialist things and material life. That's the sense. So, mind is the strong. If the mind is strong, mm -hmm. then you are absorbed uh, in a Krishna conscious or the spiritual life is certain. That's what I understood, Mataji. So, it's Hare one Krishna. of the pieces of the puzzle. Mind is not the only thing. One of the pieces of the puzzle. Because Krishna but, says also in third, third chapter of Bhagavad Gita, Indriyani Parani Ahur, Indra se para manaha, manaste parastu buddhi. That is stronger than the mind is intelligence. And buddhisto parasta saha. Like our soul is even higher than the intelligence. So there is a hierarchy given. That's one of the pieces of the puzzle. That's not the only. But I appreciate your insight and contribution. Mataji, um, no, no. I you know, One minute. Eh? Yes, whatever you say is absolutely correct. No, mind accept the thinking and feeling and the signals also accept. But if intellectual direct to the other side, if the mind is strong, then you will not be uh, for you will not follow the interest. Interest is buddhi. Am I correct, Mataji? Buddhi is the no. Buddhi drives to the always, always you. Uh, they ask you to materialist things. It will attract. Go. There is a lot of happiness in the material life, but the mind is strong. If you are in Krishna conscious, you will never be diverted to that, uh, attracted by this material life. That's what I feel. Yeah. It. Mind yeah. is the mind. If the mind is the uh, is the main uh, source for all these things, and I, I felt like that. If I am wrong, please collect me. Uh, I don't. I don't. I am not able to recollect that uh, Bhagavad Gita sloka. Yeah, I'm, I'm showing you. <laughs> uh, but, uh, I'm not. I don't want to go too analytical, but uh, uh, no, no. See, it's a part of it, since you raise that mind and all that. I just it uh, cut to my mind. <laughs> Hare Krishna. Here, Prabhu, this is the one. Indrani Parana. Ah, so, Prabhu, if you know this sloka, is taking that sloka. Yes, ma'am. The working senses are superior yeah. to dull matter. Mind is higher than the senses. Intelligence is still higher than the mind. And he, the soul, mm. is even higher than the intelligence. This is Krishna speaking, not Prem Kishore speaking, okay? Of this is course. Krishna speaking. So, intelligence is still higher than the mind. So, and if you read Govardhan Leela, Prabhupada explains there uh, in his lecture to Govardhan Leela that Krishna gives this argument to, uh, to Nand Maharaj that you cannot have any secrets because you are a public person. You're the leader. And the intelligence dictates that a public person must reveal everything to its subordinates. Something like that, he says. Anyway, we're going haywire here, but thank you. Mind is one of the pieces of the puzzle. Okay. Um, and we don't go give too much importance because if we give too much importance, then um, <laughs> then we lose the most important. 
Okay, can I go here? Can I go? Can I go to Manasiksha? Is there any other, other contributions or reflections? Please, collections? please go ahead, Mataji. Hari bol. Hari bol. Okay, so with Sri Prakash Rao Prabhuji's permission, we'll do this. Anyone who has not, <laughs> please sing. <laughs> anyone who has not recited Shivan Bhagavatam verse, the two devotees, you can raise your hand to recite this verse. Are because Pahar. you are postponing for since three days about Paris. You're not able to squeeze some time and tell this. That's why I ventured to talk like that. Please go ahead, Mataji. Please excuse me if I am wrong. Sharan Mutris Natva Dadasi Katham Atmanam Apimam Sadatvam Gandharva Giridhara Pada Prema Vilasat Shuddha Shuddham Bhodhos Natva Tvam Apinita Ramacha Sukhaya Okay, Surekha Mataji, go ahead please. Hare Krishna Mataji, Dandavat Pranam. Are cheta prodyat kapata kuti nati bharakara. Sharan mutres natvam tahasi katham atmanam apimama. Sadatvam gandharva giridhara pada prema vilasata. Sudham bodhaus natvatvam. Apinita Ramam Jasukham Sukhaya. Thank you, Mataji. Hare Krishna. And Dr. Pranam. Hare Krishna. No one else who has recited, not recited Shivan Bhagavatam verse has raised so. Oh, ruffian mind, why do you burn yourself and me, the soul, by bathing in the trickling urine of the great donkey of full born hypocrisy and duplicity? Instead, you should always bathe in the ocean of love emanating from the lotus feet of Sri Sri Gandharvika Giridhari, thereby delighting yourself. So, oh, ruffian mind. Just one second. I have a feeling that the translation is cut off. One second. Delighting yourself and me. It's and me. So, O oh, ruffian mind, why do you burn yourself and me, the soul, by bathing in the trickling urine of the great donkey of full-blown hypocrisy and duplicity? Instead, you should always bathe in the ocean of love emanating from the lotus feet of Sri Sri Gandharvika Giridhari, thereby delighting yourself and me. All right. So, this is the verse number five was about correcting our... Verse 4 was about our speech. Verse 5 was about our action, right? Because there were uh, plunderers. There were plunderers on the shining path of bhakti, which were six in number, and which were, uh, you know, holding the person path, walking on the path of bhakti through the noses, which were made, made of the wicked deeds. So the solution was to call out for help from the devotees who are devotees of the of Krishna who killed the who killed the demon called Bakasura. Right? So at this point, when our speech and our actions are purified in spiritual life, um, then one can say that okay, these are the two most important things that speech and actions are purified. So I'm good in Krishna consciousness. But in this verse, uh, uh, the Gnar Das Goswami is saying, okay, the, the six plunderers are killed. Okay, you have called out for help from the devotees who devotees of Krishna who killed Bakasura. And you have also received. So these apparent problems are gone. But there is still another problem. What is our problem? The problem is in deceiving. In living a life of deceived. And who are we deceiving? We are deceiving ourselves. In the name of bhakti, we still can be, uh, may not carry any of the lust, anger, greed, envy, pride, illusion, or madness, but we can still be deceiving ourselves in bhakti. 
how do we know that? Because we may be practicing the bhakti, but in our heart, there will not be any satisfaction or joyfulness. They will be burning. Okay, that's how we know that there is some deceit going on with ourself, with our own self. So many people who come to Krishna consciousness um, and may become like, may recognize the six enemies of the mind and may actually voluntarily address six uh, enemies of the mind, uh, but still will leave the path of bhakti uh, or Krishna consciousness in this particular process and go and join this person or that person why? Because they start to see problem in other people. Okay, you say, okay, there's a problem in my association. Or they start to see uh, something wrong with the process itself. It's very difficult or it doesn't make sense anymore. So we see that all the time. Because remember I say always that it's always easy to see problem somewhere else or in something else or someone else. Never easy to see the, the problem is actually within me. So this verse is about that, that what is the problem in me, deceiving. This verse is about the pride of the mind. Okay, um, So how are we deceiving? How are we living a hypocritic life or, or actually saying something, showing something and feeling something? And in bhakti, this is in bhakti. You see, the, we may be wearing so many masks um, and we may be like completely void in our heart. So Raghunath Das Goswami is uh, comparing this uh, burning of the mind or, or of the heart to uh, the burning caused by the donkey urine. So, okay, we may be thinking that we have all these plunderers are dead and gone. But if we raise our head <laughs> and the shower that is coming on the head is this uh, burning urine from the rear end of a donkey. Uh, which... He explains by giving, Bhakti Vinod Thakur Prabhupada explains this verse by giving three kinds of practitioners of Krishna consciousness. One practitioner is called Swanishta Bhakta. Swanishta Sadaka Bhakta is a Bhakta who is a householder, uh, but who is fully dedicated along with their family to Krishna consciousness only. They don't have like job outside. They don't have anything to gain from the material world for their maintenance. You know, in this painting, they have symbolically represented that Radha Krishna are maintaining this uh, Nishta Sadhika Bhakta's family directly. They're not dependent on job or inheritance or something else. Okay, so Swarnishta Sadhika Bhakta uh, may look like, okay, we have this family who's entirely Krishna conscious. Basically, they're talking about Grahastas who live in the temple uh, full time. Grahastas were living in the temple. Uh, but how can they be bathing in the donkey urine? Uh, by, by trying to enjoy um, in the name of bhakti, but trying to enjoy the material senses. Okay, like in this case, the, they have represented uh, eating for more prasadam. Uh, and that's enjoyment. Or this is the thing that we, we still did try to enjoy uh, by paying more attention to rich section of the society and ignoring a humble devotee or a menial devotee who actually does not have many assets. So paying a lot of attention to somebody who is in the post of power or money uh, in the society who may not be in Krishna consciousness. So we that person, we might be still bathing in that donkey urine, even though we are not dependent on them. Uh, to maintain ourselves or this happens a lot it happens a lot actually in krishna consciousness relying more on the on the logic rather than the shastras what does logic say so we keep the shastras away so the faith is weak right we keep the shastras away we say okay krishna said this this that but that's not what is going to be valid in 2024 what is going to be valid is Sorry, let me read what this scientist is saying. I'm not saying it is wrong to read what other people are writing. But relying on that more than the Shastras is what is compared to bathing in the donkey urine or living a deceitful life. Okay, And who are we deceiving here? Who is Who are we deceiving here again? Who are we deceiving? 
our self our mind ourselves the hardest thing to see is to yeah. see the mirror it's the hardest thing um or you know by by becoming by entering into a ashram like a sanyas ashram without being duly ready for it just to attract some uh, some attention from devotees from other ashram this used to happen early on in our movement not so much anymore that somebody will take to sanyas ashram but uh, they're not ready for sanyas ashram so uh, there's still attachment to talk to the opposite gender or there's attachment to actually be attached to this ashram so everybody else can respect me so swarnishta sadaka bhakta can actually bathe in tanki urine in all these ways um and then there is second class of devotees with bhakti vinod thakur prabhat explains as paranishta sadaka bhakta paranishta sadaka bhakta is like the devotee who also is a grahastha but who has a work to do in the outside world you know they have a job so you see or they are earning so in this picture it is shown that radha krishna is maintaining them through this briefcase basically they are the are source of earning is outside or there is some uh, position in the society not just a temple devotee that's called paranishta sadhika bhakta but they are very like pakka in their devotional service but they still have like most of us are like that right like working outside how can that devotee become uh, be bathing in dunky urine that devotee might portray uh, to other devotees that i am a very sincere devotee of krishna i am following all the rules and regulations of varnashram i have no lust no anger no pride no envy no madness no illusion but actually in private may still be attached to uh, things in the lower modes of nature in this way you know shown like tv dramas or books which are not related to krishna consciousness so showing something to the outside world and living something in the private world that's the gap there's a gap or so or paranishta sadaka bhakta can be bathing in dunki urine by maintaining attachment to non devotees i'm not saying that one should not take give them association actually people are looking for association of devotees i'm not saying that but becoming attached to that association more than the association of the devotees finding more sense in association of non krishna conscious people than finding more sense in krishna conscious association is like bathing in the dunki urine according to Raghunath Das Goswami. You see here, this devotee is passing by and saying, "Like I have nothing to do with this." But here, this devotee is very happily going and joining the treat. Okay, and then the third class is Nirapeksha Sadhika. Nirapeksha Sadhika is like is not a grahastha. It's either sannyasi or a brahmachari or a varnaprast. Basically, outside, like they have nothing to do with the material world. They are done. and they are only going to walk around in this material world to spread the message of krishna so that's the grahas the brahmachari or a sanyasi or a vanaprasthi devotee how can that person be bathing in the dunky urine or living a deceitful or hypocrite life in the private environment is thinking oneself to be superior to others that i am an advanced devotee i am <laughs> i am worthy of respect if you go to temple and then you know and you've been around for long and somebody doesn't give you recognition and says hari krishna i feel very offended how can you do that to me you know i'm doing such important service in prabhupad's mission Just look at me look at me i exist so like that that's like a bathing in dunky urine or actually not giving due respect to the devotees who are from other ashrams you know for sanyasis um not giving due respect to a grahastha looking at a grahastha as like a, a downtrodden person then that can also be bathing in the dunky urine basically thinking oneself superior in any fashion 
or um, associating with the rich or powerful, not for giving them Krishna consciousness, but for being greedy for their assets. Remember, they are the devotees who have nothing to do with the material world, but in the heart, they can be harboring that, okay, you know, somebody is a sannyasi, naturally, person, people bring donation. And if the sannyasi on the other end is getting attached to the comforts you see from such personalities, then Agnada Goswami saying, then that is like bathing in the donkey urine. Over here it's shown, right? The bead bag, the books, the uh, chamara are all on the floor. The altar is not well kept, but somebody is posing as a very big devotee. Okay, or uh, getting uh, attached to the other people for their other assets, not just riches, but how can they make me more comfortable? The comforts of life. I will go live in their house because the bed is very nice or this. Or this, um, this uh, Urna Madhaj explains, this painting is like more of an internal and other than external, but this was a way that they could show. She said that uh, one can still be dressed in the form of a sannyasi or vanaprastha or, or a brahmachari, but can harbor desires to have more gain from the material world okay so this they showed as okay as if that i wish i can wear this luxury luxurious clothes or designer clothes but that's not what it really is what it really is to have any kind of desire uh to be uh, more comfortable at the cost of someone else is a uh, leg like bathing in the tanki urine and here we can see right again the altar is not kept the my paraphernalia of TD worship, the books are all on the floor, the chanting bead is somewhere else, and the mind is somewhere else. So this is about, um, you know, pride of the mind, that the bathing of the donkey urine. Here we see that uh, Nirapeksha Bhakta might be in the temple and singing and chanting. But you see this briefcase with the heart is locked. So the heart may be kept locked. We, so we go with our body, but we don't bring our heart along. Because the mind is still attached and thinking about this or that gain. So that even though we might be attached to the dress. Okay. <laughs> so that is uh, bathing in the donkey urine. So I had a, I had a friend. And uh, she was uh, looking to get married. And she was connected to this devotee who was a brahmachari. Who was, who was wanting to become a grahastha and they would meet sometimes and he would still come in the brahmachari clothes. So she told him, I'm not feeling comfortable that you're coming in the brahmachari clothes. You need to change your clothes. You're not, you know, we're, we're trying to get married in your... So the answer she said, she told me she got when she said this is that brahmachari dress invites more respect and authority from others. So that's why he's not changing. The, but but they're dating on the back. So she said she felt so deceitful. She gave him ultimatum. By this day, you change the dress or we break up. He didn't change the dress. So they broke up. You see, it's so powerful. We actually um, imply this message. That uh, if you are of this particular ashram, you're more advanced. We actually say, we actually do that too. But that's not real. That's not real. Just by becoming, uh, having a dress is not going to automatically make one more Krishna conscious than other person. Actually, if we are implying that and uh, not getting purified, then we are actually bathing in this urine. What is the solution? The solution is the heart wants to swim in the ocean of love. Right? That's the whole deal. It comes down to that. Every attempt to become happy comes down to this, to bathe in the ocean of love. So how do we bathe in the ocean of love? By taking shelter of Giri, Gandharvika Giridhari. In Mayapur, I went to Mayapur this summer, last summer, and I went to Pakistanta Prabhupada Samadhi. In that Samadhi, there is a temple, and in temple, the worshipable deities are Gandharvika Giridhari. 
जी गंडर आई वॉज आई सॉ द डी आई वॉज लाइक ओ माई गॉड गंडर भी का गिरीधारी दिस इज बी रीड इन बन शिक्षा सो टेकिंग शेल्टर ऑफ गंधर भी का गिरीधारी बिकॉज दे कैन प्रोवाइड एज द ओशन ऑफ लव एंड 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 फ्री एस फ्रॉम दिस डिसीट वी हैव टू गो टू कृष्णा एंड से दैट आई एम डिसीटिंग माई सेल्फ कृष्णा शो मी द पाथ आई डोंट नो एंड say with the thing that okay krishna i promise that whatever solution you will give i will follow it i'll follow the solution and then uh, we have to also uh, you know uh, choose because krishna will show us both the path simultaneously but have strength to choose krishna over anything always even though other thing looks very attractive lucrative still choose krishna you know may not look very attractive but still guru gandharvi ka giridhari just still that's why in this particular verse he is not das goswami is addressing the mind as o oh, ruffian mind go he is like showing the stick to the mind now in verse number 1 he is called the mind brother right my brother i beseech you with the with the sweet words he said like that oh my dear brother Right, this is verse number one. More dear brother, so he is being very very um, humble. But in this particular verse, he is saying, "Oh ruffian mind!" So already like showing the stick. Why do you burn yourself and me, the soul, by taking, by bathing in the trickling urine of the great donkey of full blown hypocrisy and duplicity? Instead, you should always bathe in the ocean of love emanating from the lotus feet of Shri Shri Gandhar Vika Giridhari. they by delighting yourself in me okay so this is verse number 6 so we just go quickly to the revision that in verse number 5 we purified our action by getting rid of all the plunderers by calling for help to devotees of the killer of baka which is krishna now in this particular verse we are talking we are purifying or we are getting rid of the pride of mind um which is compared to bathing in donkey urine which is compared to self deceit we are deceiving ourselves okay and what is the solution the solution is sorry the solution is ask for help from Shri Shri Gandharvika, Gandhar, Shri, oh, oh, Giri Dari, to bathe in the ocean of love. Okay, this is what the verse is. I hope it helps. um the instructions are powerful i am not powerful so but the instructions are powerful okay 